Okay, so here we've got a bracket clock which is in for some uh, restoration work and maintenance work. Uh, I'm just going to go through a bit of a, an assessment just to see what its current condition is, is like at the moment. And so um, first off, first thing we notice straight away is the, um, uh, the case is rather tired. Uh, quite a lot of the um, mouldings are, uh, are loose. If you tap them, it's a good indication of how uh, secure they are because the, when you're tapping them you can hear the uh, sort of vibration when there's a loss of glue. So quite a lot of the uh, veneer and the uh, mouldings are, um, are loose. That's the first thing that I notice. Uh, the second thing I notice is that the door has been um, uh, probably re-veneered looking at it, but certainly rubbed down hard and had some work done on it. Um, and this brass uh, inlay is, uh, is loose. Also the hinges for the door are, uh, are loose, but they, that might just be the uh, security of them. Yeah, the screws are not, um, not holding. Um, these hinges may or may not be right, actually. They may be later, but uh, uh, they're functioning. I don't think that will be part of this job. The, um, moving on to the movement, we can see here that the dial has got a sort of an odd look to it. It looks to have actually been silver plated. Uh, that's not correct. It would have originally been uh, straight grain and uh, then silvered uh, with a, um, uh, a cold chemical silvering process that we use traditionally in, in horology. Uh, not uh, not a, a plating like this. So that will uh, potentially need to be reversed. Uh, the wax is in quite poor condition. It's it's coming away, and there's various various areas where the wax is actually lost. Uh, but there's basic there's a lot of sort of polishing compound in the engraving at the moment, so that doesn't give too much of an indication. But uh, uh, it's probably going to need the engraving rewaxing as well with black hard wax. Looking at the back of the case. We can uh, open up the rear door. Again, areas of um, the, most of the veneer is is loose. This moulding is very loose. Will need to be re-glued. We can see that it has at some point had a replacement pendulum made for it. This is not the original pendulum, but uh, we uh, won't be doing anything about that. It will. Um, uh, stay as a working part of the uh, of the clock. Movement looks like it's been quite a number of years since it's been addressed. Uh, it looks to be uh, very worn in places. The uh, fusee is a lot of wear there. Um, there's a pin protruding here, which is um, interesting. Um, I wonder if that's been put in as a way of protecting the escapement because this has got a pin pallet escapement. A pinwheel escapement, rather, um, but it could just be that that, that is a, a steady pin that's never been shortened. So uh, I'll look into that before I write it off completely. Uh, but uh, it looks to be uh, to be fundamentally okay, just uh, worn to the point where it has stopped. So next job is to take the movement out of the case. So just assessing the movement, the condition, 
first thing that strikes me straight away is that the uh, lines here on the fuses are phosphor bronze. Um, that's not the the worst that I see. The worst is when they're fitted with steel lines. They are really horrible and they really wear the um, surface of the barrel and the grooves of the fusee. But uh, phosphor bronze isn't as isn't as bad. It is a little bit better for the clock. Uh, but they're not as strong as people think. They do uh, break, uh, and I don't like them, and I don't refit them. So uh, this will be going back to. Um, it'll probably have synthetic uh, gut lines fitted when this goes back together. Uh, but I can see that there's uh, quite a bit of uh, of dirt. Uh, on the surface of the teeth which indicates that it's uh, it's actually uh, picking up and starting to wear uh, because there shouldn't really be uh, any uh, any dirt or grease in the in the teeth like that so that's uh, that's one thing but this is the side that we'd already noticed the amount of wear in so that indicates that as the bearing is wearing this is pulling uh, being pulled away um, from its depth thing, so the depth thing is getting shallower and shallower, so the teeth are going to start wearing, which is potentially what's happening here. So we'll just turn the movement around. You can see everything seems to be intact, and I can't see anything very obviously uh, uh, missing or broken, apart from the uh, nut that's retaining the bell, which is a uh, uh, just a, a small BA nut where it should be a square uh, larger nut. So I'll just take the bell off to have a look. And there's an interesting, interesting idea of a repair gone on here underneath the nut. That's uh, some form of electrical uh, nut or call it of some description. Uh, I'm not 100% convinced the bell is original actually, so that might be why they've been trying to accommodate a, uh, uh, a different bell. Uh, now with the bell removed I can see, just inspecting the escapement, that there is at least one uh, pin on the escapement uh, bent. So zoomed in you can just see here this pin is uh, bent down on the escapement. That's probably been caused by handling, so moving the clock with the pendulum on uh, has probably caused the, uh, the escapement to bang into that pin. But I'll go round and make sure there's another one which is bent across slightly there. I will go round the wheel and make sure that uh, all the pins are in uh, good condition and present and part of the job will be to uh, to address those and uh, straighten any up that are that are bent. So I'll now as the next stage remove the dial and hands and have a look what the uh, movement looks like on the front plate. So the first thing we do is extract the pin. And then remove the hands. Just having a look at the hand as I'm taking it off. And then this, our hand has got a sliding uh, latch type retainer. Sometimes they have a screw, sometimes they have pins. Uh, and sometimes they have this type of latch. And there's the hour hand. Very unusual ha hour hand. I can't say I've uh, ever seen anything quite like that. And I will um, have a closer look and see see if I'm convinced that that is original or not. But uh, I suppose at the moment I've got no reason to doubt it. It looks very old. Removing the retaining pins. And now the 
dial will come off forwards. Okay, so there's the dial side of the movement. This is the uh, front plate and the uh, rack striking mechanism. There is a, a bit of uh, damage to the rack tail, but nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, small soft solder repair here, but the gathering pallet is present. Uh, everything seems to be in relatively good order, uh, apart from the fact there's a missing pin here uh, for the uh, fifth pillar, but that's uh, easily uh, rectified. Uh, the only thing that jumps out at me as a uh, a nasty is this plate here. This is not original and you'll see it's actually uh, a dressing wear in the uh, in the front bearing of the fusey and that's something that somebody's retrofitted as a sort of a way of uh, um, of taking up some wear. Uh, that's not the correct way of doing it and I'll be removing that and doing it the job properly. You can see here, if I zoom in, you can see here, this is the uh, escape wheel pivot and you can see how red it is with dried up oil and this oil is now actually uh, mixing with, uh, uh, with, it's just full of dirt and it's a grinding paste, it is, it's wearing the, um, the pivot so that's uh, an indication that it, this clock is well past uh, needing needing an overhaul. The dial has at some stage been um, silver plated which is uh, a really uh, odd thing to do. It's not the uh, normal practice and uh, I'll have to speak to the client and see what they want to do about it but uh, I think we're going to be uh, reversing that and, um, um, uh, and putting the traditional grained finish and uh, restoring the wax as I mentioned earlier. But it's a really um, odd thing to have been carried out. The uh, back of the dial actually looks quite nice, uh, but uh, whether we'll be able to um, to restore the front of the dial without affecting the back of it, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I hope that I will, because I always like to retain the back of the dial in untouched condition as much as possible. So there we go, we've got the movement and dial separated and out of the case so we can have a, a closer look at the uh, condition and I will now go and have a uh, chat with the client and see what the, uh, what the brief is, give him my recommendations and we will go from there.